no intro, no intro, no nothing. Yeah. You're gonna leave him off from the last one. Come on, boys. Marriage boy, you don't want to get married. This is like, this is my question. Guess what? I'm on a video. The other one was fun. This one's gonna be just a little bit more exciting. You wanna know why? Look behind my shoulder. Look behind my shoulder. Look, look over there. Look over there. Look over there. Look over there. Hold on. Let me do the matrix. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me do the matrix. That's not the matrix, buddy. Look. Let me do the matrix. Yeah. Uh, as you guys can tell, we have two guests today, right? First time? No, no we had Jenny, Jenny and Fatima. Second time. Second, second time. time. Well, this is the first, and we have two guests. That technically, are one guest, right? The first, first couple. Back. The first couple. First man. Uh, I so um. I'm gonna be quiet in this one. <laughs> this is the Encarnacion family. You guys may know them from their fitness videos, uh, or you guys know the cool. Person in the family of Chiss Kane, not them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. don't. <laughs> I want to see well, why you're not interviewing her. <laughs> because she's not going to talk to him. Every time I ask her a question. <laughs> <laughs> that's another, right? KK, let me get your hand. No. No. <laughs> I told her not to touch boys. <laughs> oh. 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 You just so. touch him. He's like, <laughs> like, what is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like like she does his poke stuff. Hey, she really does that. She does his post though. She goes, Yo, you're yeah, smart, that's, just, that's smart. Hi. Methodical, methodical. And she's like, she's like, we're, 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 we're back, up so we're back we're with the legs. Basically, you know, we always, our goal is to build a platform, right? And so many times, you know, we have this vision or this dream of a uh, fairy tale marriage, a fairy tale family, but that is not practical, that's not real. So we want to prepare <laughs> ourselves and people, right? If you're interested in a family, if you're interested in a marriage, in a healthy relationship, Right? We want to get people who are doing that, who are living that. Thank and you. so we have a, a, the blessing of knowing people around that we can look up to. Right? So the idea is I we want <laughs> to get, you know, familiar, get a couple of questions. You know, if you guys have any other questions, you guys can submit me later. But want to get something <laughs> basic, right? Like something basic like, you know, how did this start? Ask her. She has a great story. Go ahead, babe. How did this start? How did this start? How did this start? Hector and I have known each other for a um, since 2007, so 11 years. Let's not go with dates, because remember, I um, And we were just, I think we were Do whatever you want. She's talking to Georgia, she's like this. Like, what I was telling you. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, we met at Georgia's house. Yeah, we met at Georgia's house. Like, we were like, so out of the blue. Like, so we met at church, and it was just, like, we were so out. Like, he was with his friends, I was with mine, and we were, like, so distant from each other in that aspect of being interested. You guys know, I mean, you guys grew up with us. So, uh, 2012 came and something just sparked. It, it was kind of like Hector and I have, like, age wise, we're like perfect. Like, two years apart, you know, he's old and da da da. Or what perfect of what you would think of yeah. what a girl always <laughs> wants. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we just started talking. Like, uh, we were friends already, but we started talking with an interest. And we can <coughs> find that we have a lot of things in common. We got along really well. And basically, that's what sparked the relationship. That's what that's what you're yeah. So you guys are the opposite of what I want to be, essentially speaking, right? Yeah, if, right? If you ever watch any of the videos, you already know. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm not against marriage or nothing. I'm just Georgia's not. Hey, you gonna get married? No. Right. So like you know, I have like all of. So people around me, all my friends, they all, if they know that eventually they want to get there, right? They all know that right now, whatever, you know, we're figuring life out, we're trying to get <coughs> to this point, whatever, right? But eventually, I do want to find somebody, settle down, share my life with, all mm -hmm. that stuff, right? Okay, so for, I guess, people like me, right? What have you found in each other that you didn't have before? That's a good question. Okay. Let's start with the most obvious. Girls tend to be a little more emotional and tend to act out of their emotions. I found myself in a lot of trouble because at times I don't know how to handle myself. So don't say I'll, that. Don't say trouble. I would get myself into trouble because I would act, overreact, and you know, like find myself clashing with people for no reason. You know, so I think that Hector has been able to balance me out, and all the time we've been together in that way to think more before I act, to listen before I speak. I was more like, uh, impulsive. Like that, you know, very impulsive. And he was, he was always more mellow. He's like more relaxed. He thinks about things before he reacts. So that's one of the things that I'm very grateful to because I have been able to, he's been able to rub off on me in that way. What about you, Hector? Wait, what? 
<laughs> what was the question again? You were mistaken. Answer correctly. Answer correctly. Have you seen? Have you guys seen that meme where there's like the guy who's like dripping in sweat? Like, <laughs> yeah. <"Hey." laughs> yeah. What was the question I again, sorry? So, what have you found in each other that you didn't have before? Bro, honestly speaking, I'm a mess. I, as a man, I can tell you, thinking back on how I was before, I was a mess. I was all over the place. I wake up, I have a clean house. I come home, I have food. She, she keeps me on a clock. You know how you, you're always, life is, you kind of like on a balance beam. You're a little leaning to left, you're a little leaning to right. It's the perfect, you know, middle in order for me to do whatever it is that I want without going too far. Kind of like you want to do something, but then are you going straight? And all of a sudden you have that person that goes, tss, tss, I got you, relax. But when you're going stressed out and you, in my career, you're all stressed out or whatever. And having that person that you're able to come back home to and that you can express yourself to, without them judging you and you can feel, all right, I feel better now. That's priceless. In your situation. No, 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 no. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Like, so, do it, I was, do I was, it. so I'm going to be careful. Do it. No, don't all be right. careful. Don't hold me back. This is not all. All right, all right. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Go in. Like, Why that happen to me? No, 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 no. no. All right. Before I, before I go there, let me ask. It's general because I don't know. Are you or are you not in a relationship? No. You're not. Fantastic. You're in your house. You're doing everything. Sometimes you come home or sometimes you're going somewhere. Don't you have that time every so often that you wish you can speak to someone? It happens. And don't tell me not because I know it happens. Is that the thing is, okay, well, this, this is the thing with me, and I've spoken with Chris about it. The thing is that I'm pretty open when I'm having conversations with people anyways. You get me? Okay. So whenever, like, for example, like in my house, right, I have my sister. So, like, sometimes my sister will come and say something, something that I think is, like, dumb. And, and it'll be, like, the littlest thing, I'll make it the biggest conversation. You get me? And I do that with a lot of things. People say things, and that's why people are like, oh, you just love to argue. I don't love to argue. just that I feel like you're not thinking about what you're saying. So let me go ahead and let's explore this together and let's just talk about it broadly. So I have a lot of conversation with a lot of people. Like, it's just, I never, I never, at least to this moment in life where you just said, I not haven't really been like, oh man, I wish I had somebody to talk to and I haven't done it. But it, it doesn't have to be now. I tell you this, you go through life, you're in your career, you're in everything, you're, this takes off, you're, everything's great. You come home, you sit down in bed, you're like, damn, I have everything. Then you look back and you've left nothing. How does that make you feel? Right? How, yeah. how would that make you feel? Like you look, you can look back and you go, Damn, I'm on top of the world. And you look back and you well, literally have nothing. Well, you see, that, that's the thing. Um, For me, like doing this podcast, right, you can see that, you know, depending on how you view things, you might be like, oh, he's just talking crap and rambling, whatever, whatever. But you see, like for me, I have more of, of something in my mind because it's always very constant. It's to impact, period. Like, you know, I understand that some people, for them, leaving a legacy is in their kids, right? Mm-hmm. Having kids and I'm going to pass down what I give to you, but... I've kind of realized that in my time, like my parents, I feel like I've surpassed my parents in in some way of, of thinking. Get me at this point in my life. Get me? Just because other people that have gotten, like, let's say on this platform, have been able to speak. And their legacy isn't necessarily with the kids, but with what they left behind. Like, like, let's take Steve Jobs, for example, right? Probably, like, you know, family man. We know it's probably like one of the worst family men, whatever. But he left something. He left something behind, right? He impacted the world in some way. Yeah. So that's how I'm, at least for now, at this point in my life, I'm, not, yeah, that's that's how I'm, I'm looking saying, at That's it. what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, moving on into the future, you might, you might not. I always tell people, you know, and I'm not saying you or categorizing you under this, but I always tell some people when I mess with like, listen, every thug, I'm not saying you're a thug, but every, <laughs> <laughs> but, but every thug, every person that says, never, 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 I'm never, 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 never. That sounds like a rap song. Never, right? Well, now they Trey Wade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, they've always said that. They go through life. Something clicks in their life that all of a sudden they say, yo, like, I'm missing something. And everybody in its time. Not everybody has a specific time. Like, it doesn't have to be in now. It could be later, in a few years, that you find yourself with, that somebody really interacts well with you, that somebody really hears you out, 
maybe right now you haven't found somebody who like attracts you with their mind because i see that you're more of a mind guy you like to like perceive how people think and stuff and maybe somebody has been attracted to you in that way but maybe one day you'll find somebody who is like wow i love her mind i love her and and you're gonna find yourself opening up to that person but it has to be with a special person it's not just with whatever girl so one day you will encounter that and then everything will unravel in that aspect. The, the, the thing for me and her is, I want, like from a previous video, I've always wanted to be a family man. I never wanted to be the type of person to say, I want to travel the world and then when I have my kids, I want to tell them, Daddy, look here, all over the place. And Mommy? No, I met her when I got to Miami. <laughs> no, but that's always been my mentality. You know, I've always wanted to be like, no, listen. Mommy and Daddy have been here. We've traveled the world. Why? Because that's what I want to influence into her. Whenever she gets, God's coming, God's coming, people. <laughs> <laughs> when that, that, when that point of the direction that happened in 17 years. Uh, yeah. when, when that part of life gets here, it's I want her to have that state of mind that I want to do everything with my partner. Why? So when she has her kids, God's coming. Um... They can, they can, can yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, He's trying to say that, meaning she's not going to get there. She's not going to get there, but. But that's, that's me. Some people want to do their own thing at their own pace at their own time. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I really don't like the, the fact that some people in their life have to say, you have to get a career. You have to go to college. You have to do this. You have to do that. Life like, is not too like, weird. like, you have to live life based on somebody else's merits. That's good. I, you don't have to. I personally think I'm just gonna put this in parentheses and make it shorter for school. You have to get a career. Do I encourage my? Will I encourage my daughter to get a, a a degree? Absolutely. But now you're gonna tell me, let's say, to be a doctor. Okay, you wanna be successful. You wanna be a doctor. You have to go to college and put yourself in debt and have four or five hundred thousand dollars in debt in order for you to become successful and then you have to pay off that debt in order for you to even profit off of that. It makes no sense. I, I don't think that if if you if you want to do something, okay, do something that's gonna make you profit. If that's what you want for. If you do that that is gonna make you happy. Not because, oh, uh, they said I have to be a doctor, okay, so you're telling me that in order for me to be successful, I first have to put myself into debt, then get out of debt in order to be successful. That makes no, sense. or do something that doesn't make you happy. I have so many friends who have done nursing or anything in the medical field, and they end up like changing to like realty or you know other things. And it's like, wow, you did all of that, and you know you studied hard to get there, and you found that you didn't like it. No, we want to encourage our daughter to do what she loves to do, and we'll help her discover that. Yeah. But um, but yeah, back to your question. But nonetheless, I I love being married. <laughs> You're different. No, but you know, I, I, I like that you said that though, honestly, because I think that you know we live in this this world where people feel like it's just this one path, right? And and most of the time it's due to people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We we tend to put our what we want in life aside to kind of please everybody else. Yeah. Right? Right. So to please our mom, to please our dad, our our cousin. You know, we don't want to show up to Thanksgiving dinner and they start asking, "Oh, so what are you doing for a living now?" You know what I mean? Right. Everybody's saying, "Oh, I'm this, I'm this big thing," and you're. The person that's not, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. So I understand, you know, a lot of us go through those struggles, but, you know, it's it's about, and, and, I, and I've heard this a lot too, like, you know, I rather, for example, like me, right? Like, my mom's very supportive of me, so my mom's not like, oh, you you better stay in school, you better, you know, like, my mom's supportive of whatever it is I want to do, she's supportive, but I know that there's other people that, you know, their mom's like, oh, no, you better do this, you better yeah, do that, yeah. I sacrificed so much for you, nobody's going to tell me that. You know, you know like, there's some people that, like, you know, they could have had their kid young, right? Mm -hmm. And because they have their kid young, now they're, like, the black sheep of the family and stuff. Yeah. And now everybody's like, oh, you're going to fail because of this. So now all of those insecurities, they tend to put them on their kid. And they tend to weigh that on their kid. Because now it's like, oh, if you're not successful, everybody's going to think I'm a failure. And everybody, and I can't have that. You know what I mean? And those those things end up being conflicts later on. You know what I mean? So i rather have conflict with my mom. Let's say she was, if I was in a situation right now. You know, and then for the next five years, we're not talking because I didn't do what you do, and now I've made it, I've showed you, and then we could, you know, reconcile that and to have conflict the last five years because I resented you because I did something that I'm miserable at now. I'll make money, whatever, but I'm miserable, but now I'm going to resent you. Right. Yeah? So right. I think that what you guys said is perfect. I, I say this, I don't mean you talk about it a lot, that it's about pursuing what makes you happy anyways. Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. No, putting your burden on your kid is the worst thing that you can do. 
No, but hey, I have a question. Hey, I should not have to pay the price for my failures or my lackeys or hey, you know, I'm still going to school, but I, ha- I don't have my AA or my bachelor's degree like I should according to right. my age. Mm-hmm. No, I'm way behind, but I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it so I can set an example, and I'm doing it. That's what matters. So I will tell Katie when they look. I graduated high school. I had um, mishaps, and then at 26, I'm still getting my AA, but that's okay because I want to do it for me, and I'm not going to put my burdens on her. Okay, right after high school, you have to go to college, and you have to spend four years in college. And no, that's not that's not the point but, of anything. But it's not. you didn't fail. You're a great mom. You stay at home with the baby. That's you good. take care of her. Uh, what 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 portion of failure is that? And according to whose category or whose ruler? I go to work. I go. I come home. When I come home, listen. I tell her all the time. I work eight hours a day. That's all I work. She works twenty four. I will never take that credit from her. So you're gonna tell me that because we have a successful family home, a, a beautiful. Our baby wakes up. She has food on her table. She's always taken care of. They're, the mom is always playing with her. We're always here, but because you don't have a degree, all of a sudden you haven't been successful at it's other at, at other at other people's merits. No, Why? Some people wish that they had the opportunity to stay home and take care of the house while everything is being taken care of. Right. We've been afforded by the grace of God that opportunity. So, how is that failure? Because of, I don't listen. I'm probably gonna get a degree because it's gonna help me in my career. I don't, I don't want one. I don't care for one. But because I want to achieve that purpose, if I don't get it, I'm not going to get there. But you don't have to, hey, right out of high school, you got to get a degree. Great. What are you going to do with your degree? With your degree? Uh, I have no idea. What's your degree? Political science. Fantastic. What are you going to do with that? A, a lot of people, you know, hey, that's, what's wrong with political science degree? <laughs> you know, he didn't even realize that you're a political scientist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, for your information, I have two degrees, so put some respect on my name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I'm I, sorry. I, I think the, the way you said, though, is right. Right? Like, you know, you we scientific just plan <laughs> too many things <laughs> we do, we do. in our minds that we think, like, oh, this is how life is supposed to be. Right? Like, you get out of high school, you go straight to college, and, you know, you think out of college, I'm going to get this fantastic job, and I'm going to race my way to the top year by year and I'm I'm gonna be a CEO. And I'm yeah, I'm be a CEO people that have degrees have nothing to do with them. Yeah. And it, it, you know everything sometimes people are not experience. even ready to make a, like a choice like that yeah. at eighteen right. or seventeen years old. Some people still need some time to discover. I mean you guys realize that most of the graduates cannot even get a job because they don't have experience. Right. So you know I have a ton of people I know a ton of people who have like amazing degrees and they don't have their job. They're not fulfilled by their job. So let me ask you a question. You know, a lot of you guys are talking about like, you know, these ambitions and education levels. By the way, how we're completely you, off topic. How do you, no, no, this, this is important no. because you guys, uh, this will bring you to my question. How do you align your individual ambitions with a collective idea of marriage? That's a good question. Because you know, like you, you said like you, you want, <laughs> you said like you want to be a cop and you want to achieve this other stuff. And obviously you have your own personal ambitions too. But how does that come into play when now you have a child and now you have you guys each other? I tell her this. You can ask her one question. When, whenever she's told me she's wanted to achieve something, when have I ever told her no? Never. I've never told her no. You want to do it? By all means. The person to but support. I'm the first one to say, do whatever it is that you want to do. A lot of people get confused when they get married and all of a sudden they're doing everything for that other person and they forget to do everything for themselves. Yeah. You start losing yourself. You start losing the person that you are, the character that you have because all of a sudden, no, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to, okay, but what do you want to do? Whenever she's wanted to do something, I've never told her no. What do you want to go for it? I tell her, you want to go for that? Fantastic, I'm here at 100%. Just analyze your situation, figure out if you want to do that, and by all means, let's go for it. In my situation, it's, a, it, well, I guess with my career, it's a little different because wherever I'm at, if I change, my pension system changes. Okay, so I have to analyze that, but if there's anything, if I can, if she gets a job, let's say up in Broward, and I'm not here, hey, let's go up there, I don't mind driving down here. You know, it's one of those things that all of a sudden, okay, let's, let's see where we're at, because at the end of the day, yeah. you, you, have to, you have to be able to compromise. You have to do whatever it is that you want to do for yourself, but without losing focus that you're also a family person, and that you have to take care of the family. Right. You get what I'm saying? For example, me, is like, okay, I work midnights now. I, I used to work mornings. Finally, yeah. But all of a sudden, 
Okay. He doesn't wonder where we're looking because David yeah, Katie is coming. Baby Katie's coming through. <laughs> Is she okay? Oh my, she's been crying since she left? Hey, baby, Hi. come here. You can tell she's crying a lot. Look at her cheeks. Come here. Red. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey. That's the star of the show, guys. Hey, That's the star of the show. We're trying to distract her. Was she okay? She, she, she was what? never going to see you guys again. Yeah. Get her out of work. Go ahead, work. She was. Go ahead, she's, she's always home with me. So she's like, yeah. she used to be. This is reality. This, this is, is the reality. reality. But nonetheless, you're able to compromise without making the other person feel like their point of view is meaningless. So if if you make if you're able to do whatever it is that you can do and support your partner well without making your perspective more important than theirs, then you're good. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, that's, it's support. That's, that's it's literally what it is. Balance, balance, support, compromise. But like, each other what are these conversations look like on a daily? Cause I mean, it sounds good in theory. You wanna know something that Hector and I do a lot? Uh, not every day, but like every so often. We, like, I'm sorry, you know, a little radar, but like, if, we sh if we're in the shower together, or if we're like- That is not rated R, that's bed, rated Jesus! Somewhere where it's just us two, um, we will talk and we'll be like, okay, babe, so let me ask you a question. Is there anything that you think that I need to change? Is there anything that I, that you feel like I'm doing wrong with you? Am I being a little wife? Am I being a with Katie? Like we analyze each other and then, you know, we take that time to correct each other in a non-heated way. Mm -hmm. You know, we're both calm and that's why I give the example of the shower. When you take a shower, you're very relaxed, you're very calm. So you I already praise Jesus, I'm feeling good. You can tell me whatever you want. And, and, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but you can't argue when you're naked. No, you're right. <laughs> it just can't that's this so true. You, you can't argue. argue. You you so know, I can't stand time. you, Jesus. <laughs> 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 to release it and talk about it and correct each other. So it's very important to evaluate yourself as a couple. Listen. We, our goal as a Christian marriage, as as a, a marriage who wants to last, is forever. So that's what's part. Or, so like he says, Jesus comes before Kelly gets married. <laughs> or meet somebody, you know? So um, the goal is forever. You cannot make it to forever if every year you're like building up negative stuff and then you never clear the air. Listen, at, at the end of the day, it's people get in their relationships, but all of a sudden they still have this individualism state of mind. For example, hey, listen, you're speaking to me in a certain way. No, I'm not. I don't, I don't do that. I don't like it. You're married. You need to have the ability to take constructive criticism mm -hmm. without, without you, I getting guess, defensive. getting defensive. Why? Because all of a sudden, when you're in the center, you can't see what's going on, but that other person, you may say something, but that other person is receiving it not in the same way that you're that you're saying it. You think you're right. No, no, no. You're screwing that. Like, just stop, analyze it, and think of it. The moment you have the ability to take criticism from your partner, it doesn't have to be naked. You've, but grown. You, you, you've, you, grown. you've grown together. You, you have the ability to overcome and communicate better. Mm -hmm. People say communication, communication, communication. That's fantastic. But if you're unable to take criticism from that person, you that person that knows you the best, that person that knows when you're mad, when you're angry, when you're sad, when you're awake, when you're asleep, you're not going to get anywhere because you're too focused thinking about yourself and not too focused on thinking what that person is trying to tell you mm -hmm. because of how they're receiving it. Right. You can't argue when you're naked. All right, so now let me ask you another question. There's going to be times where you guys are not longer naked, so you guys are pissed. What do you do then? Because you're going to be mad. You know, I, I, I heard once, a marriage that doesn't get mad is a marriage that doesn't last. No, we get mad. So what do you guys well, do when we, you guys we are mad at each other? I, to be completely honest, sometimes she says something or I say something. I'm wording it like this because I don't want to throw the blame at either of us. Sometimes I say stupid stuff. Sometimes she says stupid stuff. They're never stupid. Sometimes she says stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, bro. It's good. Yeah, 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 it
It's like, say what you got to say. Like, it's not what you think. <laughs> I meant that in the best way. All right, so you start saying back, things back and forth, and all of a sudden, you you know, I know how she reacts. But in marriage, I am constantly working on the way that she reacts so that she, we don't have the same outcome. For example, if you're doing something and you're constantly reacting the same way, you're constantly going to have the same reaction. You get what I'm saying? If you do something and whatever it happens, you react a certain way, you're going to get the same outcome. You have to change that reaction in order for you to change the outcome. I speak to her. When I notice that she's somewhere up here, yes, as a person, you get very defensive. But in the moment, it's kind of like, okay, who's more mad, either her or I? She's more mad. I need to be the person that goes, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand. You have to be the bigger person. And for that moment, you got to just bring yourself down. I do it in, in my career where somebody's going, ah, they're screaming at me because you. I'm like, yes, sir, you have to understand that. that, that. Why? I can't hear you. What you talking about? And it's all psychological. Yeah. And the moment that, oh, but I can't. I'm trying to talk to you, but you keep screaming it. it has, they have no choice but psychologically lower their volume. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, okay, get your space. I'm going to go do something. I know you, everyone, and by everyone, I mean 90% of women, and you're in that 1%, uh, <laughs> want to settle things now. Sometimes settle, wanting to settle things now is going to cause more of an issue than if you give each other a space, even if it's just 30 minutes, for you to go take a walk, go run, go, go, go buy something, and then come back. Those 30 minutes that you get, your brain is no longer reacting in that same way. So all of a sudden, you start analyzing. So sometimes I, I get in the car, and I'm like, Bro, oh my God, I can't wait till I get up. And then I start analyzing. No, I was never going to argue anymore. I think I want to go home and sleep. Babe, I'm sorry. Because your brain is wired completely different. And you say, I want to say this like this because I'm mad. But if I say it like this, she's going to get into this. Then I'm going to tell her this. And then as you start going through that process, all of a sudden you're like, Bro, this is not even an argument. I don't want to go to home and sleep. But I'm tired. Let me add to this. Um, I swear I didn't as, the as the years go by and as time goes by, you learn to argue wisely. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, as the, I remember when we first, in our relationship, and when we first got married, we used to have heated arguments that would, in our relationship, we would have heated arguments that would last hours. No, no, Maybe no. even a day. I think our longest argument was like a day. And, um... And then as time would pass by, we were like, man, we're spending time arguing, and that's time that is being taken away from being together. So we learned to, like, overcome that. Like, we are like, no, you know, our time together is more valuable than a petty argument. So, you know, little by little, we would progress, and we would learn how to argue. So now we kind of read each other, like he said. If, if I see that I'm more calm, and then I'm about to poke a button that is going to make him burst, I'll just back off. Okay. I don't burst. We'll talk about that later. And um, the same thing with him. If he knows that he's about to poke something that is, you know, going to make me burst, then he'll back off and we'll get back to you it. You may want to rethink those words because they don't sound right right now. <laughs> you just dirty my nose. You guys know exactly what I'm saying. So, oh, so I you, learn, <laughs> you learn to argue wisely as time passes by. But that's something only time can teach you. And experience. That's after good, after that's so mistakes good that you've made. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you better put all of this in a t-shirt. <laughs> Actually, I ain't gonna lie. Send me the profit, and we're good. We start coming up with the merch. We gotta put so many things. <laughs> <laughs> t-shirts and stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah man. So you best believe you can't be mad when you're naked and turn on a t-shirt. For sure. I like that one. I think that's biblical, right? Somewhere in the Bible. Tell us, tell us, tell The mountain of the rest. What? what? <laughs> Oh, no, bro. You're talking about chicken breast. Relax. You never realize what that means until you read it with that mindset. All right, so, uh, thank you guys for doing this. Um, it was definitely very insightful, different you know, different perspectives. From You guys have, like, some time now, you know, that you guys have been in a relationship. So, I'm sure, like, us and, you know, the people who are viewing us are definitely going to get, like, you know, um, good insight, you know, and value from what you guys said. So, we thank you guys. Uh, we thank you guys again for... Wait. Wait! Uh -huh. I forgot what I was going to say. You can't say no, wait! It's not that important, right? Wait! Wait! Listen, okay. Because we're in the whole topic of relationships and all that stuff. I, I have some 
honest, honest advice for anyone young that wants to be in a relationship. You're going to be, you're at, in a young age, you have a very, 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 very high ego when it comes to, I want to do me, 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 me. And it comes to everything else. If you want to get involved in a relationship and you think the relationship is actually worth it, not necessarily to us or to somebody. Not everything that people portray in, I'm going to say, church or, at, you know, in a public environment is who they are. If you can see and you can read people the way that they are and you can say, you know what, I would like to have something like that, do the same thing that you're doing. Just quite honestly, ask them, hey, how do you guys work? Because maybe my current relationship doesn't have that element. And if you're able to take that from one relationship and apply it to your relationship in a test run, I guess, type of thing, or communicating in a certain way and your relationship grows, then you have something else to look for. You know, that, that whole, it's about me, 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 me. You didn't get into a relationship for you. You got into a relationship to make that other person happy. Yeah. Even though it sounds kind of selfish, because yeah, in reality, in reality you're, getting, you're getting into a relationship with somebody because they make you feel happy. Right. That's, all, that's also very selfish of you. You're like, no, 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 I'm just with her because she makes me happy. I guess you're not with her because you make her happy. You have to think about things in that way wow. so that you'll be able to analyze the situation and say, you know what? Let me apply this to religion. I like what they're doing. Hey, how do you guys do this? And if you get away from that, I'm prideful and I'm the man and I know exactly what's supposed to be. Or the female, oh no, I, I'm always right or I'm always this. Understand that if they're pointing something out and you take that criticism creatively and you're able to reach out to someone that says this, I'm going through this, and you're able to change your relationship, it's going to last longer. With that being said, I love you. And another thing, um, for people like George or anybody else out there who might be watching, He's here. know that every stage of your life, you. you need to enjoy it because <laughs> you might not get that stage back. I'm happily married. I enjoyed my life before being in a relationship. So I can look back and I can say I'm happy. I'm happy with every stage that I've been. So enjoy this single stage that you have. Because one day you will get married, and hopefully it will last forever. And then you're going to look back to this, and you're going to be like, man, I, I missed this thing. So enjoy that. Enjoy. Every every stage has its purpose. That's good. And don't forget that nakedness. You Sorry. bet. Yeah. Praise from Jesus. You got a shower. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's put on a t-shirt for real. You can't know it right soon. <laughs>